Hi everyone, and happy holidays. I find this is a great time of year to look back over the past 12 months and ask the question, how did we do? What did we accomplish? When I look back at Engineers Without Borders in 2010, I'm proud. I think we accomplished a lot. And in particular, I think we did so because of the tremendous people who are part of this organization. They bring a passion, but they bring an intellect and an ability to dive into issues and not accept easy answers. And they do that across all of our work, whether it's in Africa or Canada. I have a tremendous chance to interact with them throughout the year, hundreds of great leaders, sitting around till three in the morning, diving into issues such as commercial farming in Africa, or maybe behavior change among the average Canadian. And these individuals stand out. I sat down with one EW beer who had come back from a top MBA program about halfway through the year. And I asked him, how do EW beers stack up against the people in your class? And he said, while others might have more experience, one thing he saw within EWB is a spirit and a desire and an ability to think about system change that he just did not see in the other people in his MBA class, or that it was a very rare trait. And when I look at the past year and what EWBers have accomplished, it is tremendous. In Canada, EWBers have run almost 2,300 separate activities across the country, whether it's our city networks, our student chapters, our distributed action teams across the country, they're driving change. I think to the 115 MPs we've met about 250 times throughout the year, our accountable, creative and transparent aid campaign that Michael Ignatieff and major leaders from all parties heard about and eventually got behind with Engineers Without Borders throughout the year. I think about the 75,000 people who heard about fair trade during Halloween with our reverse trick-or-treat activities. And I think about the 9,000 first-year engineering students who heard about the idea that you can solve problems that matter in engineering. And they heard about it in their first two months of university, setting the tone for how they'll see engineering and how they'll interact as engineers with the world. And I think about the amazing innovations that our chapters had across the country, from coast to coast, really. I think about Vancouver and the chapters there collaborating on things like the Fair Trade Expo at the Sustainable Convention, Purchasing Convention that was on there in the spring, or the amazing Bridging the Gap Conference that was the largest development conference outside of Engineers Without Borders National Development Conference in Canada. And then you go to the other coast and think about the innovations that the St. John's Munn chapter drove in Newfoundland, going around to 12 schools in five days, giving 60 presentations to 1,500 kids on issues about the world and what we can do to interact in the world, and in particular, what we can do as Canadians to interact with Africa in a more positive way. And all these people across the country these amazing leaders putting in 140,000 volunteer hours created some great momentum and delivered some tremendous change in this past year. When I think about our work in Africa over the past 12 months, it's equally as impressive. For some of you who've been following my Twitter feed, you know that I just got back from Ghana, where I was able to see our work firsthand and get a sense of what it's accomplishing. Just a couple of weeks ago, I was in this little village called Wamale, and I was meeting with the Kapang Mang Kawuna Suunda Farmers Group, which means whoever puts in a little effort, God will help you achieve great things. And I was sitting down with them because they are participating in Engineers Without Borders and the Ministry of Food and Agriculture's innovation, agriculture as a business, and the curriculum that goes along with it. And they've been participating for the past six months and have accomplished great things already. The leader of this group, Safura, about halfway through the meeting, stands up and proclaims what they've been able to accomplish. And then she runs into her hut and brings out this bank statement and shows it to me, and shows me the bottom line and that they've saved $1,000 in the past six months alone using the agriculture as a business curriculum. And I think about an innovation like that and numerous others that EWB has worked alongside local partners to figure out how to spread in this past year. 
So now dozens of groups across Ghana have received agriculture as a business curricula. We have offices running better information systems and running more effectively because of it. We have organizations that are more able to connect farmers to markets and markets to farmers so that they're able to increase their income substantially. I even think back 18 months ago to my trip in Malawi, which is just down here. And when I was there, we had just started developing the water point monitoring system that is now spread over this past year to six different districts, which represents a population of over a million people. And those water point monitoring tools that have been put in place to make better decisions, to look at where are you gonna repair water pumps and where are you gonna put new ones. That's empowered people in these local district offices is now running at those six districts and has already influenced millions of dollars of international development spending on water projects. And we're ready for more this past, next year. My understanding is that our team wants to expand that to at least 12, if not 20 districts in the next 12 months. And it's just one of five innovations that they have on the go and that they're spreading. And so our work in Africa, these innovations that we're working on and that we're spreading, that we're working alongside our local partners with, are gaining traction and they're gaining incredible momentum. So much so that our partners now want to invest in EWB so that we can do more of that great work alongside them. So even in the past couple of months, we've been able to confirm $200,000 of funds that our partners, whether it's local government or NGOs, have pledged to EWB to get our volunteers working on their projects, which is a great description of the success that they see in EWB's work in Africa in 2010. And finally, the culture and spirit of EWB is very much alive and well. I think about something like our failure report, which we've published for the last two years and which has gotten great accolades in the past 12 months, from the blog GiveWell, which is a rating site for charities. They've given EWB thumbs up, saying that an organization that is able to dive in and publicly admit their failures is one that is more likely to be successful. And I think to Peace Dividend Trust, another international development organization, which has decided to publish their own failure report this year, inspired by EWB. And I think about that type of change that our organization is able to drive by putting out new ideas and acting in a different way along the lines of our strong culture. And a thousand EWBers are gonna to come together in just a few weeks in Toronto for our 10th anniversary conference to dive in and bring their energy and their passion, but also their smarts to look at international development, to rethink those big questions that are on the table on how you bring things to scale or how you understand farmer behavior more effectively. And they're gonna dive into big issues around how you bring people together in Canada to create change, to change the relationship fundamentally that Canadians and Canada has with Africa. So I look at 2010 and it was a great success. And I wanted to say thank you. Thank you to the hundreds of EWB leaders who helped make it a success by putting in their blood, sweat and tears to do so to the thousands of people who invested their time and their money in this organization in 2010, thank you for making it a great year. But we can't stop there. And this is my personal appeal to all of you as the holiday seasons come to a close. If EWB is gonna continue our momentum from 2010 into 2011 and grow our impact, we're gonna need the financial resources to do so. And so, if you haven't yet considered making a donation to EWB, I ask you to consider it today. And if you've already made a donation, perhaps you can afford a little bit more. And if you can't, then go out and maybe talk to some of your friends or your family members about Engineers Without Borders and say, here's an organization that is effective, efficient, and has great impact. And you can talk to them about the success that we've had in 2010 and say, we need that help to be able to have more impact in 2011. So thank you in advance, and thank you for being part of EWB and part of our success in 2010. I look forward to 2011, and I wish all of you a very happy holidays.